Welcome back to the channel for another audio video project. Today I will be showing you something that I've been working on for a couple of weeks now. The goal of this project was to encode audio onto a strip of paper and play it back using this simple cardboard tape transport and a webcam. I call this QR tape. In order to pull this off, I wrote some software to split an audio file into small pieces and then encoded them into QR codes. I then built a simple tape transport out of cardboard to move the codes past the camera at around one or two codes per second. This is fast enough to keep up with real-time audio playback encoded with the extremely efficient Opus codec. The tape transport started life as an empty cardboard box, one of many that had been piling up near my front door. I removed the shipping labels from it and began to think about how the tape would pass through the box from one side to the other. The ultimate goal is to provide consistent lighting, a mount point for the webcam, and to help manage the tapes, which end up being several meters long. The tools required to put this together are pretty simple. A hot glue gun, box cutter, some painter's tape, and scissors were all that I needed. The first thing I did was use some wide painter's tape to seal up the bottom of the box. This forms the foundation of the build. Next, I started to think about the design of the spools. I decided to reuse the core of a paper towel roll cut down to length. This is convenient because it is already a sturdy cardboard tube that the tape can spool on easily. I traced my roll of painter's tape as a template for the spool end caps. I will need four of these to create two spools. One holds the source tape and the other takes up the played back tape, also known as a take up spool. After using some hot glue to affix the end caps onto the cardboard tube, the spool was ready to go. I used a wooden skewer from the kitchen as an axle. It's not perfect, but it will do the trick. The next step was to design spool mounts. I decided to use strips of cardboard to form rigid mounts by gluing four pieces together. I then glued these mounts to the side of the box. And here is the finished spool mount. There's a little bit of wobble, but it's not the end of the world. A simple solution that works. Now I had to prepare to cut a slot in the side of the box to route the tape through. I wrapped some tape around the spool and eyeballed the spot on the box to cut through. Then used my box cutter to make the slot. I added a small horizontal piece of cardboard to affix a small piece of foam to. The goal was to have this serve as a pinch roller to put tension on the tape. The pinch roller ended up not being needed in the end, but having these pieces of cardboard on both sides made it easier to set up the machine to playback for the first time. I repeated what I had done on the left side of the box on the right, cutting a slot and adding a spool. Once this was completed, I had to install the internal components. The first was the scanning stage for the tape to pass over in front of the camera. I attached a sheet of white paper to a piece of cardboard to use as the scanning stage. This helps to increase contrast as the QR codes are printed as close to the edge of the paper tape as possible. Part of the QR specification is that there must be a margin, and this helps to provide it. I also added cross members to hold the camera in place above the QR codes that pass by underneath. I created a pulley by gluing a few layers of cardboard together and then glued that to a stepper motor. This will be used to pull the tape through the box. With the help of a friend of mine who had some stepper motor drivers laying around, we were able to get the motor turning in just a few minutes. A rubber band is employed as a belt. I was a bit concerned that this might be problematic, but it worked out surprisingly well. At this point in the project, I took a pause and started thinking about the software that would be required to make this all work. In the end, I wrote a small tool called QR Tape to make the encoding and decoding process easier. The QR Tape tool performs two functions. The first is encoding. It will take an input file and split it into a number of small pieces that can each fit into a separate QR code. It also adds a sequence number and a checksum to verify the contents. The second function is decoding. It takes scanned barcode data from standard input, decodes them, and then writes the contents to standard output. As part of this process, it verifies that duplicates are removed and checks the checksum to make sure that no corrupted data is passed through to the application. With the software figured out, I turned my attention back to the hardware. I decided to polish this up a bit and add some LEDs and power switches for the light and motor. In the interest of time, I won't take you through the finer details of the wiring, but the end result is simple. Two switches, one to enable six LEDs to illuminate the platform, and another to enable a stepper motor. Up until this point, I was using a flashlight to illuminate the QR codes. This was actually too bright and was washing out the image slightly, so this actually helped with scanning performance. I was also turning the spools manually to get the QR codes to scan. This is all fine and nice, but adding a stepper motor makes it feel a lot more like a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder from decades past. When you put this hardware and software together, you get a really quirky way of listening to music. This is like vinyl records for people who want even more punishment. The final part of this setup worth mentioning is how I prepared these tapes. 
I used a Brother QL700 label printer with a 62 millimeter wide strip of continuous feed paper. There is a great Python library called Brother QL that allows printing to this printer and bypassing the CUPS print stack under Unix. Using this library allows me to disable cuts, enable high resolution printing, and script the printing of an entire song with a simple bash one line script. The print process is very slow as the thermal printer throttles very quickly. The song showcased at the beginning of this video is just a little more than four minutes long and requires 157 barcodes to store it. Each barcode takes nearly 20 seconds to print due to the cooldown times necessary between prints, so it definitely takes a while. So that is QR tape. I hope you enjoyed the build log and demo. I had a lot of fun putting this project together. It's kind of a really goofy like cardboard paper craft, but it plays music. I think that's awesome. I've got some more demo audio at the end of this video, more details in a blog post linked in the video description, as well as the code on GitHub. And if you want to see more from me, feel free to hit the subscribe button. I've got at least two other audio video compression related videos on my channel. So you might enjoy those as well. And there's probably going to be more to come. Um, and then also, if you enjoyed this video or you have questions, uh, drop a like or leave a comment. Those really motivate me to do this more, and I will definitely respond to your questions. So before I let you get back to the demo audio at the end of this video, I wanted to give two special thanks. The first to Espen Croft, who graciously let me use the music at the beginning and end of this video. I think he's a really great composer. He does all kinds of interesting 80s synth music, and I highly recommend you check out his channel. Both the song and the channel are linked below. I also wanted to thank Ryan from Fabricate. Uh, he's a friend of mine in the area, and he had some stepper motor gear on hand, and we were able to get that motor stepping in like a couple of hours, and it was a really good time. So if you need any project stuff, check out his website below. He's got a lot of neat stuff going on there too. So that's all I've got for now. I'll leave you back to the demo music, and with that, I will see you next time.